Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to the ICA Cricket Show, a show that I, Satish Vishwanathan, am privileged to host. Today's discussion will revolve around the Indian Women's Tour of Australia, the fall set to get underway on September 21 with the first of the three ODIs. But once I introduce my guests for the day, though for one of them is just past midnight, I must add, you will understand that we will not be restricted ourselves just to this one tour, which, by the way, will see the Mitali Raj led Indians play their first ever day night test, that too with a pink ball. Welcome to modern day cricket. Let me start with the lady joining us all the way from Houston, Texas, where it is approximately 12.30 a.m. at the moment. She's the prime example of the fact that will career, marriage, etc. can take a cricketer out of India, you can't take cricket out of her or him. Post a four-test 13 ODI career, which included two World Cups, tours to many parts of the world, Rajeshwari Dholakya, initially called Baby, as she made her India double at the age of 15, but now more fondly known as Raju, cut short a career early and traveled around the world with a family before settling in Houston, where she has taken up coaching youngsters. Welcome to the show, Raju. It's really nice of you to join us despite the late, late hour. Thank you so much, Satish. It's my honor and privilege uh, to be in this uh, ICA conducted uh, show and uh, looking forward to a very nice uh, conversation about our girls in blue in Australia. Brilliant, brilliant, great. Next up is another veteran, Manjula Kishore, these days known as Manjula Nirmal Kumar Kishore, a middle order back who modeled herself in the great GRV. Manjula happens, she happens to be my idol too. Manjula led Andhra and played for South Zone at the same time Raju led NP and Central Zone. Manju was among the first batch of women cricketers to be recruited by the Indian Railways. This was way back in 1985. Just this March, she retired from South Central Railway. Talk about being loyal to one organization. A postgraduate diploma in journalism from Aspana University has led her to becoming a freelance journalist, and she just enjoys writing, she says. Great to have you too on the show, Manju. Thank you. It's my pleasure too. Lovely. Our third panelist is someone who turns a year older tomorrow, or do we say younger? A left handed opening bat, known for attacking ways, but a good defense too. She will be the right person to analyze some of the younger players, including Shafali Verma, one of India's most promising batters today. A DDCA selector presently, and a sports marketing graduate from IIM Rotak. Wow. She's also pursuing a level two course at the NCA. After a playing career, started 77 ODIs and a test. She's into big, she's big into the mental condition aspect of the sport. Happy birthday in advance, Jaya Sharma, and welcome to the show. Thank you. I mean, I couldn't, uh, uh, I cannot imagine, uh, you know, the best way to introduce. I mean, th this is the best introduction that I have received in uh, quite some time. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I do not, don't normally get praise for intros, but yes, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, it's, it's nice to have the three of you. I, I know uh, must express my gratitude to Shanta Rangaswamy also. She's the one who put this panel together. Thank you, Shanta. Uh, Jaya, actually, I want to start with you, you know, and it's something that's right up your alley. This is the new normal now, but I can't get my head around the fact, you know, the Indians landed in Australia on August 30th and had to hard quarantine until this Monday. That is 14 days of being confined in a hotel room. They have just started training and the first game is less than five days away. Now, what kind of state will these girls be in? How does one help them cope? And I know it's both teams in the same boat, but Jaya, what, what, what do you make of this? So, yeah, I mean, um, this is something which is uh, taking a toll on, uh, you know, uh, athletes uh, all over the world now, you know, the Olympics and the Paralympics, uh, we have seen many uh, athletes talk about mental mental health and a lot of uh, importance is now being given. But I still believe that uh, from, you know, playing in India, from our culture, we that is something which is very overlooked subject in our country. So whenever we talk about sports, it's all the physical attributes. But uh, with my experience playing, you know, it's, it's been, I played for uh, almost 25 uh, plus years uh, in professional cricket, including my stint with uh, India. 
So one thing I found out that one thing that matters the most is the psychological. It's everything is psych psychological game. And especially with this current scenario, a player has to deal with many variables, not just the pressure of performing, pressure of playing for your country, representing your country, which is which is very, very tough job. And, and when you're touring abroad, it is way more difficult when you are quarantined, you can't interact. And in our, in yeah. our Indian society, it's, it's, we are very much, you know, it's not that to go somewhere, to meet somewhere, uh, someone, we need to take uh, an appointment or go somewhere. We, we, we are like friendly people. So it, cool. yes, it is, it is very uh, difficult at this moment, but at the same time uh, with the, you know, all the resources that BCCI is providing for the Indian team, women team. I believe that all the cricketers that, because I have witnessed them uh, playing, uh, I have seen them, I have met them in, uh, just before going, they were having a camp in NCA. And I was, uh, I happened to be there for my level two course. So I think they have turned very professional. So they, they know how to deal with all these uh, circumstances. And I think that's the best part uh, to play a sport. Uh, interesting, interesting. Uh, Raju, you heard this, yes. this quarantine and this will obviously yes. happening everywhere oh, yeah. in the world, world over, but you know, sport is you know, very tough for a sports person to go through this. But you know, in your days, I'm sure there's, there's a question of uh, isolation thing, you know, the, the kind mean, of travel that you did. So, uh, so when we talk of isolation, it's, it's just a, a COVID thing, which is fairly new to us, but the the general, um, like when you compare from what the modern day cricket versus even in women's cricket as to how we, um, uh, what we faced, you know, the kind of, um, the struggle was basically what the women cricketers went through. Uh, when you talk of Chakde India and you talk of women's hockey, uh, anybody would uh, 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 kind of fathom that a girl can pick up a hockey stick but in 1971, when a girl started picking up a bat, nobody would even uh, uh, pay attention to that. That women, girls in cricket, no way, you know. And uh, we kind of, um, uh, the first nationals happens in 1973. And then uh, uh, the word spreads. Gradually, the teams are formed uh, all over India. And we are just traveling in unreserved compartments. And uh, I remember our uh, second nationals is when the MP team traveled to Varanasi nationals and the train uh, halts at the, you know, the terminal, which is away from the main platform. And we get off and um, uh, we're looking at our coach and our manager as to now what? With her beddings and suitcases and the kit, uh, uh, we say, sir, uh, coolie. And the, guy, the, the, you know, the coach in charge says, Where's the money for a coolie, you know? So what, what are we going to do? How are we going to go to the main station? We are just told to jump onto the tracks when the train is not coming and pass on the luggage. That was our first experience to go in a tournament where we were 13, 14 years old, you know? Okay. And uh, there is like a book I can write on the hardships which we have gone through. So from year 2006, we are so thankful uh, that BCCI is looking after women's cricket so nicely. And uh, all the, you know, the, the standard of the game has gone up. The achievements are just phenomenal when we look at Mithali Raj, Julian Goswami, Harman Preet Kaur, and now Shabali Verma following in the wings, you know, slowly. Good. So <laughs> 1973 to 2021, it is sustained by the uh, the ex India uh, cricketers even before BCCI under WCAI. Uh, to name just a few ladies who have sacrificed their lives uh, uh, to sustain cricket in India are Shantaranga Swami, Diana Adelji, Shubangi Kulkarni, Sudha Shah, Anjali Pandharkar, Nilima Barwe. I mean, the list is endless now. Gargi Banerjee is the manager here uh, in Australia with the team. She was one of these most stylish openers of India. And uh, all these ladies have uh, uh, sustained it when WCI was there and post WCI under BCCI. So 
uh, they have either been uh, the coaches, the managers, or the chairperson, or match referees, and what not. So, I mean, hats off to all these ladies who have sustained cricket. I got married after playing the World Cup in 1982 in New Zealand. I got married in 1983 and played uh, Nationals, Varanasi Nationals, 83 after marriage. And the last one I played was Interzonals, uh, Rani Jhansi in Bombay, One Kid Stadium and CCI. And then I quit after that. I was only 23 years. So from 1983, to 2021, a lot of us got married in that particular period of time. Susan Itticharya, Fauzi Khalili, you know, uh, or quite a few of us got married and some but, of us but lot got of, Did a lot of you play? Did a lot of you play after marriage? So, so uh, that's what I'm coming to, that we, were, we, got, we got detached because after marriage, a girl has to go wherever in those days the husband's career took us, correct? True. So, so some of, uh, Susan Itticharya had to quit Fauzi Khalili is right now the chairperson of the Canadian women's cricket team. And uh, so basically, Fauzi, myself, Jotsna Patel, who lives in Tampa, Florida, she migrated to USA in 78. She's now the one of the selectors of the US women's cricket team. So we are all trying to come back and give it back to uh, women's cricket in the best possible way we can, residing outside India. And okay, these ladies, the reason, uh, the reason uh, I hats off to Jaya. Manju and hats off to Jaya and all of you all for doing what you've been doing for women's cricket. Yeah, I mean, just highly, I mean, very interesting indeed. And the reason I asked you about the marriage part is, you know, there was a symposium on sports, uh, women's sports recently on a yeah. national level. And uh, I, there was a thing about how tough it is for women because of the marriage factor that they drop off. So that's the that's thing of, of obviously we'll debate it another day especially coming to cricket. So just to complete that thought of yours, I quit in 23. At age 54, I got back onto, onto the field and I've been coaching youth boys for seven years and recently started coaching uh, women, uh, created a Houston women's cricket team. So we ladies get married, give, give birth to children. I became, I was going to become a grandmother and I'm a grandmother of two girls right now and I'm coaching. So, oh, oh, oh. I mean, not to go to the extreme and when cricketers quit and, you know, uh, they can, uh, for us, we become mothers too. So for us to come back is tough, but when we do come back. <laughs> well, congrats, congrats on the comeback and all the best. And I do hope you produce some good cricketers in the US. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. We are on our way doing it. Yes. Yeah, super. <laughs> But you heard Jaya recapturing some of the older days. I'm sure you have your, I mean, women's cricket has been through a long journey, as long longer than your career actually, which has been massive with the, the railways. Yeah. Anything that you would like to share, you know, those days, how it was and how you guys faced these challenges? Yeah, to start initially, women's cricket in Hyderabad. Uh, Hyderabad is a princely state, you know, you it's a very laid back uh, kind of atmosphere. It was started to commemorate International Women's Cricket, the International Year of Women. So it started in 1975. I started cricket in 77. So I had two, three batches who are senior to me. But uh, it has sowed such a nice seed in our mind that mm -hmm. we could take up the game happily. Thanks to our parental encouragement, we could uh, think of, you know, playing the game at a higher level, just not college level. Right. Okay. Uh, you know, we can all agree of now that women's cricket indeed has come a long way. But the current generation, pandemic notwithstanding, of course, are blessed. But starting with the Indian Test and ODI captain, Mithali Raj, these are confident women and girls. But the Mithali we see today is far different to the one when she started, obviously. Isn't she, Manju? I mean, for someone who was seen her from the very beginning, can you yeah. some light on his outstanding performance? Yeah. See, Metali is a child prodigy. She is immensely gifted. And uh, right from a very young age, she was very calm and poised. So she was a little different from the rest of those kids who were very naughty off the field. So Metali, we spotted her when she was very young. And we put her in the senior squad. I was a selector myself uh, during that tenure 
Well, so we saw some potential in her and put her right from junior, sub juniors to the seniors, thinking that even if she doesn't play in the 11, she'll get to be groomed watching the seniors play at that level. So we uh, played a very, uh, what do you say, uh, influential role in grooming her up from a sub junior player to the national level player. And uh, uh, AP and uh, Railways also has played a very important role in her grooming up. I think uh, I would like to add one thing because uh, yeah. I've uh, had my longest uh, stint, I mean, uh, be it uh, as a teammate or uh, as a batting partner. That was Mithali. That was Mithali for uh, uh, basically for the Indian Railways team. And uh, we, we played so many matches together. We batted for so many uh, number of hours for overs. And I have seen, I mean, for us, our story goes back uh, when we were, I, I believe we were 14, 13, 14, 15, I, and we were in the under 19 India camp at that moment. And then uh, that was the time that, uh, you know, the journey started uh, for me with Mitali. And I have seen uh, her grow like anything. I mean, be it professionally, be it, uh, you know, skill, skill wise. And she, she is keep, She's keep on doing that. Still, she is, you know, pursuing something and she's adding something uh, to her kitty. I, I, I believe uh, she has the strongest work ethics in the lot. Okay. That's good. That's good to know. See, uh, Jaya, that's where I want, you know, from Mitali, I want to shift it to uh, I mean, the veteran Mitali, who's possibly nearing the end of her career, to someone who's a prodigy now. You know, and who bats very, very much like you, uh, Shefali Varma. What do you, what do you think of? And she had a great test debut too. So that's not, we're not categorizing her as only a one-day player. She got a chance in England and grabbed it. So what do you make of her? What do you think of her batting style? Throw some light on her, please. So uh, basically, uh, if you talk about Shefali Varma, Shef Shefali Varma, one thing is very, uh, you know, important in her, uh, the way she is building up her career, she, the way she's progressing, she is improving. You know, I would say game, game, every game, she is adding something. She is either, you know, doing some uh, certain things, which I never expected that she will do. She did that in a test match. She, I mean, the moment she defended the first ball, I knew mm -hmm. that this girl is going to make history in test as well. Because if you, if you talk about test cricket, we have seen, uh, you know, Virender Sehwag making history in Test cricket. All these stroke players, all these uh, explosive uh, players, they have a lot of potential when, when put to Test cricket. Even they have a greater chance to succeed. And the way Shefali is playing, I think uh, one thing is very important that the team management is also playing a very good role in letting her be. What yeah, she true. Be. That's important, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so, sorry. So, coming to that point, when you say defense, correct? That's what is required for any test player to uh, stay at the wickets. So, somebody like Shafali Verma, who is an aggressive player to begin with, and at her young age, we saw how she has uh, developed or how she's been groomed to become a complete cricketer by by becoming a confident defender of the ball too. So in cricket, it always takes one ball to get out. So any batsman who is an aggressive or who wants to really uh, make a name for herself or himself has to learn to stay at the wickets when you're talking about test cricket. So for Shafali to become a complete player, we saw that in her, in her uh, English tour, right? That right. Uh, she has kind of transformed herself into a test cricketer too. So any format, it will take one ball to get out. So as a coach, uh, Jaya, uh, yeah, of course. I mean, uh, we know what you're doing at the nets, correct? That's right. Look, uh, the, X, the X factor that Shifali brings in, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that she she uh, she's someone who likes to express herself, and that is the best thing. There's no room for doubt, and mm -hmm. as as you rightly mentioned, you just need one ball to get out. And that that happens when you get doubt. For Shifali, 
doubt doesn't exist. So I think that that is something which is the key factor uh, behind her success. Yeah, I think there's one aspect you briefly mentioned this, Jaya, is also the with mean, this doubt part, if you see, who can put the doubt in? One is yourself as a player. The yeah. other is somebody in the team. Of team course. management. Here you're right that they are encouraging her. Right? Yes. Through saying not nobody has curbed her and say go and play your game, whatever it is, and we'll back you. It's just like you know, a Rishabh Pant can be told so much only. You know, yes. Beyond a point, you can't. And and the other aspect that both of you mentioned is about the defense part. I always felt that the greatest of players have two reactions to a good ball. Right. Either they defend it safely or they hit it out of the park. You know, these are yes. but both are needed. You you can't have only one and then succeed because as you said, runs are also key. Right. You know, so I, I agree with uh, you guys on this. You know, uh, speaking of talent and things like that, uh, Raju, I, I just, you know, you have this particular team in the Indian team in Australia. I think but, the right balance of youth and experience. But you will have some of some of your favorites must be there. Who are you looking forward to watching as the series unfolds? So, uh, 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 looking at the uh, last time they played in England versus now what they're going to play, uh, the team, there are some new faces I noticed, which I may, uh, Jaya may correct me because I'm far yes, away. There are, there are. The cricket here. So, Yastika. Uh, some, someone Kajia. like Yastika, someone like Yastika. Meghna no? Singh. Yeah, Meghna Singh. So, yeah, yeah, there are some. There's new... a Richa Ghosh and there's a Renuka Singh Thakur. Yes. Uh, have they played earlier or they're going to debut? Richa Ghosh, Rich, Richa Ghosh uh, she was a part of the team for quite some time. But uh, these three uh, players, they're, they all are. Oh, they're going to debut. Okay. And, and well, we are expecting some uh, fantastic innings from uh, Smriti Manda Mandana. And uh, I think uh, Jemima Rodericks hasn't clicked in the last tour, if I remember correctly. So we yeah. need to see some fireworks from her too. And of course... Harman Preet Kaur, I want to see her repeat that 171 not out in England. True. Yeah, wish she could give us, uh, wish we could get that Harman Preet Kaur back in <laughs> form and in uh, in that uh, you know, in that mode and mood of hitting it uh, out of the stadium most of the time. So yeah, the, the the good part there is that in that particular thing, these people have played like uh, Aju was saying. Norman Pitkov, I'm great the big bash. So, you know, that experience yeah. uh, will help. That's an advantage. Yeah, that's an advantage. Uh, Manjur, I want to come to you on this. It's, it's a very unusual uh, thing. This happened with the Indian team, Indian men's team also in England. The similar thing is happening now in Australia. Our team has played far more cricket leading up to this series than even the hosts. You know, this, is, this doesn't generally happen. The English team, that the Joe Root team I'm talking about, had not nobody had played county cricket because they were considering the hundreds and rested for various things and all that. But you know, the Indians, for example, this particular team, the women's team, they played a series, you know, against uh, South Africa at home in March, two months to the UK in the summer. Whereas Australia last played against New Zealand in April. The Indian team then went out to have a 15-day camp in Bangalore. You know, 35 probables trained. They trained under lights, played inter squad matches. I mean, underwent some really stringent fitness sessions I've been reading about. And team bonding sessions, apart from, of course, skill training. So, Manju, do you think this would help the team? You know, even though Australia, as you know, is possibly historically always been a very, very strong side. Yeah, actually, see, Indians have had the experience of playing and touring to different <coughs> countries over the period of time. But the thing is, Australia is playing at their home state. They have the home advantage. Whereas Indian, most of the Indian girls, some of them have experienced the Australian pitches. But um, as um, Raju and Jaya mentioned, there are three, four debutants <coughs> who, who didn't have much experience of touring Australia. But uh, any player who is a stroke maker, stroke maker would love to play on Australian wickets. So we have uh, Arman, uh, Smriti, Jemima, and Shafali, and of course, seasoned Mithali. Mithali can yeah. adapt her game and style to suit any pitch. She and there is this Pooja Vastrakar, I hear, yeah, is she, a very hard hitter of the ball, right? 
yeah she is more of a bowler than a batter oh, she comes okay. she comes lower order in batting okay. order but mithali is one person the batting is going to revolve round mm-hmm. be it in the one days and test but only drawback we have is we are playing for the first time the pink ball so mm-hmm. <laughs> even for mithali yeah even for mithali it's going to be a challenge mm-hmm. but mithali is far far seasoned player player mm-hmm. so she'll be able to adapt and the entire team is going to revolve around her stay at the wicket especially in the test matches so i think, so I think uh, for uh, this team one thing is very uh, that stand out for me is that they are getting all the players who are the core of the team and the players around them the players are now getting to know their role much better you know as as we were just talking about mithali being uh, you know playing an anchor sheet role shefali knows what she has to do she has to take the run rate up and let other battles settle in so i i think this is something which is uh, from england's uh, series they have taken this and uh, towards the last of last phase of the series we have seen that they have acclimatized and there is no role ambiguity as such so that will we that will play a very crucial part in how the team will perform and as far as the bowling goes okay uh, satish i have to mention an, a very interesting anecdote here uh, yeah please our first series in new zealand okay 1976 so we played against australia uh, in uh, india in 1975 and that has been termed unofficial because uh, it was an under 25 team sent by australia but when we went then we went to new zealand and uh, we were there for 40 days in new zealand but we played only one test match in dunedin but when we reached uh, new zealand and uh, uh, i was in my 11th grade and uh, uh, when i look at rajeshwari gaikwad okay i kind of feel as if i am bowling uh, because diana idelji was the flat trajectory diana had the distinction of taking men cricketers out uh, you know she used to do it in the nets in bombay when west indies team and you know i met mr sir uh, kalicharan sir here in houston and uh, i mentioned to him and he says yep i know diana used to bowl to us in the nets you know when west indies would be touring india so diana was a very lethal uh, extraordinary uh, flat trajectory leg uh, orthodox leg spin bowler and then we had sharmila chakraborty but uh, when so when i would be taken in the 11 uh, shanta would be standing in the slips and uh, i would as a 16 year old kind of little girl in into inverted commas i would come up with my flighted deliveries okay and shanta would want me to flight the ball and she didn't uh, you know knowing her hindi coming from bangalore and canada now she claims she's very good because she's worked in lucknow <laughs> <laughs> but in those days she would stand in the slips and raju asman se dalo asman to give more fight to the ball <laughs> and oh that tour i troubled them because i would deceive them with my flights and they would try to step out and you know but we played only one test match in dunedin and then we played one test match at perth and that was our 1976 tour of uh, and and coming to uh, the initial days you know i remember it was so cold and we were playing in school grounds and stuff okay because it was still the we're talking about 1976 so we mm-hmm. didn't we were not given all the fancy uh, stadiums and stuff you know so it, it i remember it was so cold one time so we were sitting with our sweater and blazers in respective cars and then we would when our chance would come when our turn would come to go back we would be removing our blazers and our thing and diana used to be typically very scared of the ball when it was too cold so if the when she bowls and if the throw is coming uh, to her end she would say i don't care i'm leaving it <laughs> so uh, we played in those extreme conditions uh, and and we were billeted when we first went to new zealand we stayed three players in uh, the host homes and we were dropped at the ground by our uh, host family so and we had we were given some very good nominal allowance allowance we lived on for those 40 days very very different so, these days the 
girls went to England on a chartered aircraft. <laughs> oh, so wow, is it so? Yes. I didn't even know that. Because of this, the isolation and all that. And when they so toured, I can safely yeah. say uh, I should have been in Garvey Banerjee's shoes right now. Yeah, no, I don't know to Australia whether <laughs> they I, went to If I were not sitting in Houston. <laughs> uh, to Australia, I think they took a commercial flight. But uh, <laughs> so I'm talking about England. Uh, yeah. so Jaya, this, you know, when, when uh, Raju was talking about the facilities, those obviously is a huge difference now. But one of the things I've noticed on this tour of Australia, and I wanted to put on your selectors hat to this, is that there are two selectors traveling, uh, the chairperson Neetu and I think Kalpana, two of them. How, how does this, I mean, is this the right way to go? I, I'm a old school cricketer who believes that you know, once the team is selected, the captain and coach take over, possibly the manager sitting in on the meetings. So how do you look at this particular thing? No, I think uh, that that is that boundary is very well uh, set because uh, right now uh, with uh, me being in a, one of the association and heading the panel, I know my job is still uh, we get the team to be selected. Uh, after that, it's not my job. I, only I can observe, you know, as a uh, former cricketer, not as a selector, but maybe as a former cricketer, we, we have to observe. You know, there are a lot many factors when, when you have to select a player and that too uh, for a country. There's a lot many variables. There are a lot, lot, of, lot of things you need to see the combinations if these are working well, not. But I don't think so that uh, they will be interfering because you cannot, that is a protocol nowadays that has been followed. But yes, as a selector, you need to have an eye when uh, the team is performing. So I, I think you have to maintain the right balance. You have to strike the right chord there. I don't know. I mean, like, there's a possibility, you know, if you've seen uh, Ramesh Pawar, the coach, uh, talking about it, he's also talking about this tour being a preparation for the World Cup. True. So, so Manju, do you think the selectors being there is also looking at that future selection? You know, looking at World Cup, who performs here and then keeping a track? Yeah, it could be because this is the best... Uh level they can watch the temperament and the technique of the players. Domestic, we are hardly having any matches because of the COVID situation still on. I think it's just under 19 they're having. But uh, T20 World Cup is anyway close by. So they have a bench strength of people who have been left out and the guys who are playing the current team. So those who don't perform probably maybe... <laughs> And let me tell you one thing, uh, under-19 World Cup is uh, also uh, on the cards. Okay. Yeah, that, that that's is, a good... Yeah, Are we hosting the World next Cup. World Cup in India, uh, the women's? No, no that's no. I think in New Zealand. Oh, it's in New Zealand. Okay. New Zealand next year. Uh, uh, Jaya, I mean, on, speaking on the selection lines itself, uh, again, Ramesh Power, as the moment they came back uh, in England, he was talking about inducting pace. He says he wants now pacers, which is why these couple yes. of youngsters have been included. So, yes. what is where is the is there enough pace bowling talent in the under 19s? Are we looking at enough people coming in through the system? Well, uh, there has to be uh, there has to be uh, an ecosystem where you have to have a pipeline of players, and they should be groomed as in medium pacers. Pace bowling is a specialist thing. So we need to have specialized camps for that. And that has to come from, uh, from down the uh, ladder to up, up uh, you know, when, when you go to elite level. So there has to be a set way of uh, producing and grooming uh, anything. I mean, you talk about spinners, quality spinners, you talk about medium paces. Right now, because the Indian team will be playing the World Cup in New Zealand, so definitely, uh, you need pace bowlers, you need pass and bowlers. that too, and that too bowlers who can bat. So if you if you see in England series, they had most of their uh, medium pace attack bowlers who can bat as well. So that's that gives you an extra edge over the opponent. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, Jai, by, by the way, Jai, you have a message from Kaina Truhi. Oh, is it? Uh, she says that, uh, Jaya Sharma, you are a huge inspiration to many women out there. Thanks a lot for raising the bar. Good luck thank to you for future endeavors. So, How so sweet. Thank you so much. Very, very, very thank you. Early birthday gift for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
All right. Okay. Uh, ladies, you know, I, I'm going to put you all, all three of you on the mat now. Now, as we come towards the end of the show, this is, this is a series of three ODIs, a lone day-night test, and three T20s. So, series by series, one by one, starting with the person from Houston, all the way from Houston. Raji, Raju, what is your take? What's going to be the result? Well, um, T, according to me, T20s are just, uh, what do you call, uh, the, uh, on a particular day, a particular team uh, edges out by, you know, one ball here and there. Okay. So, T20 is always like a gamble, like we're you know, watching basketball and the last the second three-pointer does it, you know, it's, it's, so that is, that is where we are looking at a chance of entering the Olympics, you know. The T20 becoming a little T15 or T10, you know, will take us there, make it so interesting. So T20 is always a, a kind of anybody's game on a given day. And ODI is, uh, um, and as far as I'm concerned from the time that I've played, uh, during my time, the Australians were the best yeah, yeah. in the world. And we had only limited countries playing, uh, you know, we had only Australia, England, New Zealand, India, and West Indies as the uh, Test playing or World Cup playing countries. Now it has gone uh, to so many countries and and we are trying our best to popularize it outside. Like I said, in Canada, USA and everywhere, right? So on their pitches in Australia, I don't know what to say about the ODIs and the test matches. I would give it to Jaya to take it over. <laughs> well, we'll, <laughs> come to ja we'll come to Jaya last. We'll put Manju <laughs> on the mat now. Manju, you are saying Raji is playing. Raji is playing a very diplomatic card for a for a big change. <laughs> On Australian pitch, I wouldn't want to predict anything. If they were in India, yes, I would say okay. Well, you can predict an Australian Our win. Spinners Nobody and stopping yeah. you from predicting an Australian win. <laughs> <laughs> Could you repeat that, Satish? I said nobody is stopping you from predicting an Australian win. I'm not asking uh, no, I mean, no, so, I think so, we would not. We would not like to say that. Exactly. Uh, Why should we accept it before it's done, correct? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's one way of uh, yeah, Manju. Yeah, the thing is, uh, earlier the fielding standards of Indian team was not up to the international mark as was perceived those days. But now the Indian girls have improved a lot. The fielding is high class, especially the catches in the deep they're taking is superb. Just an example of the... Um, uh, Harleen Dillon. Uh, Harleen Dillon. Yes, yes. It's an amazing yes. catch. So we have good fielding side. Earlier we used to be on the back foot because of the fielding only. The bowling and batting, I think we can match the Australians. It's it, The fielding, of course, is improved a lot. But test match is one thing I'm really a little bit worried because we are playing the pink ball for the first time. It all depends on how we negotiate their paces. Uh, batting wise, uh, as I said earlier, a lot revolves on uh, Nithali in the test matches and ODIs with the, all these youngsters giving her the best of their game. Uh, Shafali Verma is one player I would keep an eye on because she is not confined to one format of game. So everybody, when they picked her up, the selectors, the that they, that that time selectors thought she was good only for T20s and they didn't even consider her for the South African uh, tour in India. So now they put her in the test. She scored 95. As everybody could see that she played a beautiful knock. Even in Australia, her kind of batting, I think she's going to play a trump card in all the three formats. All three formats, it's going to be Shafali Verma, and Smriti Mandana, who's going to give her open along with her. So I would uh, place T20s on an even balance. Any team which is playing on that day, it's going to be their game. Uh, test match, I would give Australia a little bit upper hand, just for the fact that they have one, one test match more experience than India. Correct. <laughs> okay. And so, Satish, uh, when she says that, I am so happy that women are playing test matches yet again. 
after you know oh, yeah, so agree. this should increase now there shouldn't be like a one test match it should get into a series of test matches because test match a test match is the real test of a cricketer i agree i mean it so is why should women be started. deprived of test matches you know now we have oh. good uh, what do you call we have uh, the world over women's cricket is getting recognized and accepted and oh, i guess we are kind of uh, attracting sponsors too so why deprive a women of playing test matches it should yeah, be i have i have an answer to that i heard uh, uh, raju i heard actually a show again in sabha kareem and professor ratnaka shetty were talking mm -hmm. again revolving women's cricket and one of them i'm not sure this is sometime back made the point that the other countries for example new zealand do not want to play test matches anymore the new zealand oh. women cricket they don't want to play test matches anymore so we are having an issue which is why the bcci has now said that we will tour or we will only if there's a test match involved which is why the one one tests are happening which is i mean hats off to the bcci on this that's, that's because, a very good move because move. see yeah. sabha was the general manager of bcci and you know mm -hmm. professor shetty was in many capacities yes. so yes. both of them have come out and said this that the other boards are not willing to play test match cricket so the problem is being created elsewhere which i'm sure with, with the bcci stepping in like this we will ensure that you know there are more tests played and that's, so, that's the way to go yes definitely so in real anyway uh, playing three day test matches so you know yeah no, go ahead okay. now yeah so i was just uh, uh, mentioning that uh, now, now from a, four days i think four days four days. Four days. yeah it's a four day test match yeah. from, from a sports management professional i uh, mm -hmm. I, i happen to understand uh, you know how all these things happen and uh, that's true the, what what sabha has mentioned and because the other uh, associations like the global bodies they have to be you know in line with what our uh, uh, association or organization wants and then the angle of roi and the funds and everything comes in so it's it's a very big picture it's just mm -hmm. uh, and i think bcci is doing a tremendous job fantastic good to hear that really yeah okay ja uh, actually we got another question for you this time it's a question from same kainat is asking you I mean, similar to what i asked you she saying that lovely morning to all of you but question is for jaya the upcoming t20 series she is asking which team is strong keeping in mind the current stats and who has the potential to emerge the player of the series from the indian team so yes uh, t20 uh, everybody is playing t20 the, the all the players they have played uh, the 100 recently yeah we have got uh, some uh, great performances from like uh, jemima rodrix she got some brilliant performances uh, we got uh, smriti mandana performing we got shifali verma performing so i think uh, it will be head to head because we have seen in the t20 world cup that uh, australia was on back foot in a, on a particular day except for the final unfortunately uh, but i think it will be a very head to head contest and uh, the moment if we can play the right combination and with a clear uh, you know game plan that this has to be done and this uh, this at this right of moment i think we have on on paper we have a very very balanced uh, side if you compare with the australia because t20 is all about power hitting and now we had we have got a uh, batsman who can do that but for that harman need to uh, need to click Herman, Herman is to click with the uh, with Shivali Verma. Yeah, yeah and what we is the prediction? We cannot put the burden on uh, one player just like that, you know. Yeah, we have to have two, three of them striking it so well, you know. Exactly. So because we, because if Shivali gets out, the run rate suddenly drops. Drops. Mm -hmm. So that puts pressure even for on Spriti as well. Yeah. That 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 was very evident in the England series. Yeah. So for this uh, this series, uh, I would say that uh, again. we need harman to click because if shifali gets us the required start we need harman to click and then mitali is there so you know we have to put runs on the board because they have got some amazing batters in their side and then yes we have quality spinners but uh, recently we have seen that they are tackling the spin very well now so they must have uh, ha they must have had some plan especially for uh, punam punam yadav and uh, so i think the team management uh, must have done their homework well one day will 
tell us how the game will progress the one day series how the players are because the first uh, the first phase uh, the first leg of the series it will decide uh, upon how in what mental state the players will be you know and then yes we have the toughest battle that is the test match and it will you know in in the uh, whole series it will definitely create an impact on uh, t20s but yes at the moment i would feel i, I feel that uh, australia has a upper hand okay but then yes. manju manju just mentioned no catches win ma- matches correct manju so mm-hmm. we're still banking on our feeling side yeah <laughs> to 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 grab those catches right <laughs> Uh, no uh, we have to even uh, depend on uh, harman preet's ability yes. to win the matches on her own so but right. then yes. as jaya said we can't just depend on one player it all exactly. depends on how we are going to use the power play in the beginning if uh, okay. shafali and uh, mandana can give us a flying start the others must capitalize on it and harman can take over and you know finish. do the match finish it off that's the thing I think I would like to mention Sneha Rana here. She has been a oh, amazing yeah. find and a uh, brilliant Wonderful. comeback story. I mean, yes. So she, yes. she, so we need uh, all-rounders. Basically, we need bowlers who can bat as well as I earlier said. So Correct. because you need to have it's a it, it's a batsman game. You need to have score on the board to defend, and we have that quality with Julian being there, Shikha being there. and we can get if we can get early wickets then we have quality spinners so i i think probably we we should have uh, batters bowlers who can bat as well yeah All right. just to uh, but I, the, <laughs> as uh, rajeshwari said shanta would tell rajeshwari aasman se bowling karo in a similar <laughs> manner in a similar manner i feel the same thing can needn't be told to poonam yadav because sometimes i feel the ball literally hangs in the air when she bowls dakti dakti ko nahi aati hai my hindi also bad aasman mein room utarti nahi ha utarti nahi and you are looking at the aasman and praying when it's going to come down so when <laughs> people are in hurry to score score yeah. runs and they just just step out to drive her probably she'll make a lot of difference oh, uh, manju <laughs> manju you brought back in my memories uh, to me the most i mean i have not watched women's cricket all of us have missed out on watching prime time of uh, uh, mitali raj julian because limited on no media or for us there was no television coverage anyway but the we have missed out on watching these present stars also but when you talk about bowling and wo asman se and all that and the right arm leg spin correct you're talking about punam yadav yeah right. leg the leg spin so leg spin. the leggy oh to me and to all of us who are from our era and who have played and been part of women's cricket shubhangi kulkarni was the ultimate yeah i agree shubhangi kulkarni 100%. was the ultimate you know that control over the flight and the variation in her bowling yeah was just she, super it's just she, very nice she she It would bowl with like so much lose control over the show you have to <laughs> yeah call yeah. it a day Satish, it was so interesting. I am ready to keep awake the whole night. I, I know, I know, I know. I, I, we are talking about you know some great catches. I'm so glad we caught the three of you today uh, to participate. That is a little message from our secretary Hitesh Madhudar also. He says thank you, good morning to all of you, and thank you so much for participating. He, he seems to have really enjoyed the show, and uh, I certainly did hosting the three of you. Uh, okay. catching up uh, it 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 makes for so wonderful moments you know that i wish all three of you you know dif- different uh, paths one uh, grandmother into coaching uh, manju is now into writing and she showed her pr skills you know till the last minute of her talk about the series results she didn't mention what's going to happen so <laughs> she was waiting and of course jaya long way to go you've, you've just embarked on new your level 2 course etc i'm sure that uh, you will succeed thank, thank you. you all three of you so much it was an absolute pleasure having you i'm sure we'll have you back one of these days for our future shows and i would also take this opportunity to thank ankita for putting this together and of course our wonderful audience i hope you all enjoyed the show thank you once again and goodbye everybody
Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank and you. thanks to ICA for taking yes. the initiative to have these uh, shows and, you know, let all of us come on a, a common platform to talk about men's yeah. and women's cricket. Thank you so much. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. And have a nice day. For, and I'll sleep off. Thank you so much. And <laughs> happy, happy birthday again, Jaya. Have a happy birthday, Jaya. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, have a wonderful year. Thank you. Thank okay. you so much. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye. 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 Thanks.